Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome back to our timber frame project. We're on kind of day three now, and today's challenge is to get the two main beams that join the frame together uh, cut and ready to fit all together. So that's the idea. You can see it's kind of like a simple four-sided uh, single bay frame and then with a longer one and then I'm going to bring a beam across on an angle and then overhang the rafters. I was going to cantilever all these rafters but I think they just twist and t you know there's a good meter and a half overhang there it just wouldn't work. So that's why I put that long three meter beam in. Seriously heavy. Should have got a smaller timber for that bit but get on with it. It is absolutely tipping it down now, first rain in weeks and I'm going to be quite limited on camera angles because yeah there's quite a few holes in the gazebo and uh, I have to be quite restrained in where I'm working. Um, so I spent the last half an hour or so getting everything sharpened because I hadn't really done that since we started so um, I sharpened our sorry resharpened our framing chisel and all the chisels I've done 25 degrees but then with a 30 degree micro bevel uh, which is what it seems to be suggested uh, for working with oak and then the other little arrival that came today which is going to help things a lot is I ordered a rather inexpensive um, but perfectly suitable rebate plane now the difference between this and the one I was using is the knife of the blade comes right to the edge so that you can play in right up to the shoulder of each tenon uh, so that's going to be helpful for just clearing out and then whilst I bought that I was fooled in and tempted into buying a uh, again inexpensive little block plane which is going to be perfect for doing all the little chamfers on the end any little tidy ups of the end grain and uh, things like that. I've been looking out for one in all the sort of secondhand sales and antiques places um, for a while and never found anything that's sort of fancy so I just bit the bullet and bought a I think it was about 20 pounds or so. Um, it's not going to go anywhere, it's not going to break, it's just one solid slab of metal but yeah the, the blade was dull as you like when it arrived so I've given that a good sharpen as well. Hopefully that's going to work okay. is basically simulating the top of the post which will be in that mortise and pegged. Um, what I want to do is rather than have this just bare on this section of the half lap I want the whole of this timber to sit onto the uh, this beam so I'm going to take out a section of this front face which will be like a housing for this part to slot into. So I've allowed for that here so we'll cut this in and then we can fit each bit. Okay, let's see how well that's worked. I think I need to take a little bit more off the sides, but little by little. Words of Oasis. Right.
your beauty, that's what we were after. Like I said, don't matter about the top, it's all about the bottom. And you can see in here, it's pretty tight there. And then the bottom of these two is now flush, or at least within a millimeter. And by the time this one, this one's slightly twisted this way. So hopefully that'll square up and that's in. One thing worth mentioning is yesterday, I was cutting my hands loads on the sides of this chisel and I guess it's just the way it's machined and forged or whatever but it's really really sharp on those so I've actually knocked back just really lightly with some 400 grit on a sharpening card and it's better now it's still pretty sharp corners but uh, it's not going to cut me like it was yesterday right we now need to cut the next I don't know what a notch it's kind of like the half lap bit basically this is where the post ends but I'm going to put a decorative sort of end on the beam so it's 90 mil deep which is too deep for my circular saw on the other end I did circular saw cuts and then used the hand saw it was just a bit messy what I thought of overnight is I can use the chain mortiser to do a mortise in the center here and then just cut two slots down and it'll to come out as one kind of notch you can use the chain mortiser to do a half lap um, but again it would just be it would probably take me about 16 hits with the chain and then moving it so I think if I just do one mortise uh, then I can cut either side and we'll be done remarkably clean underneath no tear out at all a little bit up on the upstroke on the other side impressive battery one will manage it. It's, it's amazing what difference a decent blade is. I mean I've been using this one for a few months but you get it almost 50% more cutting power I would say. So um, sometimes when the saw feels really underpowered it's actually the blade because that other one in there, uh, the mains powered one, stick a new blade in there and I think we're going to be flying through a lot of this so I'll have to uh, pick one up soon. Uh, they can find shelter. That is not a bad purchase. I think it was £40, but it's about half the price of most of the proper brands. Um, it's the faithful one. But if you sharpen the blade or the knife, well, I would uh, recommend that one for the uh, occasional timber framing or mortise and tenon type joinery. 
I'll put a link in the description to this and the little block plane. So what we'll be doing is we'll, the mortise is under here, so the posts will go in, then we'll peg it, and make sure the peg's really tight in there, and then we'll cut it flush before this one overlaps it. So you won't see this one, but you will see the side wind brace that comes in here. Now I'm going to try and use this rather undersized ratchet strap to bring it all square because it takes quite a lot of strength to pull it in. So I want to make sure that our uh, beams are parallel. Alright, now we've got to move a four metre beam. Should have had another Weetabix this morning. Look at the uh, figure and markings in that. It's a beauty when that's sanded up. I'm not going to plane these, but it'll still finish nicely. I think we have to leave it there, folks. I've learnt my lesson from yesterday. When I said to Joe, oh, I'll be five more minutes, just getting this one piece fitted. And I ended up being half an hour, 45 minutes, so I'm going to quit whilst I'm ahead. We've made some good progress. We've kind of got most of the roof, well, the, the ring beam, the top beam section done. So, three frames of it are done. I think two to go. I think I'm speeding up. And, uh, yeah, look forward to hearing your thoughts on the process. If anyone is a framer, and especially an English oak type timber framer and you've got any tips then please do stick them below because boy do I need them. But that's it, remember if you can do it yourself and we'll see you next time. Oh I've just been asked can I provide a cucumber for tea? Let's go and see if I can be the great provider for the family. <laughs> I'd say they're okay now. Yeah, let's go for it. I'll take two of those. It's cucumber cam.